So this is uh, uh, probably the third or fourth guitar that I made. We figure that it's got to be 1998. Yeah. And I made it for my daughter Erica uh, as a present. And um, it's basically inspired by a jazz guitar, electric jazz guitar that I saw uh, Jimmy DeQuisto had right. made early on. In the, in the 70s or? Well, he made it uh, probably in the 80s. Mm. He didn't make too many electrics. Right. And the only picture that I've found so far is a black and white picture. And so, so that's why you kind of called this one, you nicknamed it the Jazz Light. Jazz Light. Yeah. Mainly, uh, Erica is smaller, so uh, the scale length is a little smaller than Gibson. Uh, the body dimensions are a little smaller and the thickness is a little yeah. thinner. And I really enjoyed the Jazz headstock, so that's actually a little bit larger. See, it says little one named after Erica. Yeah, that was my nickname for her uh, when she was a kid, you know, yeah. and uh, so I thought that'd be appropriate to put on there. And it is really lightweight, so the, the body is alder? Or? Yeah, it's uh, actually two-piece alder mm. instead of mahogany, uh, but the neck is uh, two-piece uh, Honduras mahogany, and it's a set neck, Gibson style. The fingerboard, we're pretty sure, is Cocobolo. Uh, it's a rosewood for sure. Yeah, the finish is uh, what I call a midnight sunburst. And so we had, we figured out those were actually Gibson pickups, a set, right? That yeah, we, this is a uh, 490 and this is a 498. Um, without the cover though. Without the cover. We took the cover off to brighten it up somewhat. Yeah. And uh, it was a nice set, uh, a classic set. Uh, a little higher output on the bridge, a little lower output on the neck. Yeah. I, I think this is a, uh, a Nico 5 and this is a Nico 2. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're matched up really nice. has yeah. a good mellow tone. You did this uh, brass and bone nut like on my favorite Ibanez artist. Yeah, Ibanez has always been a inspiration yeah. to my building. And so the brass and bone nut uh, was something that I did on a couple of guitars. And then the, we were talking about the electronics because you bought me that Destroyer first. Yeah, the Destroyer which, uh, was, the Destroyer 2 was what, 1984, 82? Yeah, yeah. And so the, uh, uh, the electronics were fashioned after that because yeah. I had the guitar in front of me and I could yeah. see what, what I needed to do. <laughs> Pre-internet days. Pre sure. Oh yeah, all pre-internet. Yeah. You know, this body was designed from a picture that uh, wasn't from a template or anything. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it took very little to get set up again after yeah. not being played for quite a few years. And um, we noticed that there's a little bit of lacquer crazing on it, natural lacquer yeah. crazing. It's not a relic. Yeah. It's a natural. <laughs> and uh, what did you use for the finish then? You said aniline? Uh, aniline dyes uh, and uh, then Balin lacquer. That's okay. what I used exclusively at that time period. And then we went back and forth on whether to put a... Uh, a Gibson style tailpiece or the trapeze and one of the things I always like to do was something different on each build. Mm -hmm. I haven't built that many but each one is a little bit different than the previous one and I had done uh, brownie which had uh, a Gibson tailpiece I decided right. this one needed a trapeze. Yeah. The uh, pearl inlays uh, I think that was actually the first real pearl inlay that I hand cut myself from a paper pattern uh, from an art book. <laughs> yeah, so I had, uh, I had the, the picture of the uh, flower and then I used uh, old school carbon paper 
and traced it out and made different pieces from it. And it was kind of difficult. Uh, the one near the knob is on, on the carve. And uh, so I had to be very careful not to uh, sand through. Uh, but at that time in, you know, the late 90s, you could still get thick uh, mother of pearl and with a lot of nice figure in it, a lot of reds and blues. And so it was a little easier because of the added thickness, uh, probably about 70 thousandths, where nowadays 50 thousandths is, right. is the norm. So we're getting it all tuned up and get pictures for the website. And then I'll yeah. take it back to Colorado when I go back and, and give it to her yeah. so she can start playing it again. <laughs> So here's another one that we haven't seen for quite some time. This is actually the first one you made for Erica, right? Right. This was yeah. from 1994. So your brownie was first. Yeah. And this was number two. <laughs> boat parts. Yeah. Why is it boat parts? Well, it's boat parts because at that time I was just closing down uh, my business and also looking to make guitars and the woods available were teak and mahogany. So the cap is teak and the back is Honduras mahogany and the neck is also teak. Uh, and it's stuff that I had left over yeah. and uh, on forums and such you all, has anybody ever made any uh, guitars out of teak? Well, this is the only one of two or three that I've seen in quite a while. And actually, this one hasn't been out of the case for years, so uh, it's neat to see this one, too. going to be for her when she started learning so you made it actually like a um, well it's still 25 and a half inch scale right yeah this one the uh, neck is just a little bit narrower than a standard yeah. uh, fender width uh, there at the nut but it is 25 and a half inch scale and these are fender reissue uh, pickups I don't remember what models they are yeah but yeah. they were from the 94 era right and really big frets for, for just jumbo, to make jumbo, it easy yeah hit. jumbo frets in fact I think uh, Stu Mac was selling these as bass frets <laughs> nice yeah and uh, so for leveling and setting up I thought well I need a fret that is tall and wide so that I can work them down and get them correct yeah. uh, being the second guitar that I ever made uh, it was all a learning experience. Yeah, and uh, and this was just not based off of any blueprint or anything. Oh, uh, you know, it looks like a Telecaster, but if you put one next to it, you'd see definite differences. This was pre-internet for sure. You went to the library a lot. I remember. Yeah, the Brand Library and the Irvine Library were my homes for any kind of books on string instrument uh, making or repair. And I think I read everything at least four or five times. <laughs> uh, the first two guitars that I made, uh, it took me over a year just to get going. Uh, a lot of research went 
into it before I even started yeah. cutting wood. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you and you slotted all these fretboards and, and made the next from yes. scratch and everything. Yep. Yeah. This lay, this is actually the second uh, fingerboard that I laid out for this guitar. Oh, is it? The first one didn't make it. <laughs> and I had to use the rule of 18 to lay it out with dividers and cut it with a uh, razor uh, uh, a razor saw, uh, 23 or 24 thousandths thick. Uh, at the time, uh, Stuart McDonald was the only one that had one, mm. and so I, I finally got one. Uh, but yeah, it's all laid out by hand, and it's all cut by hand. The headstock design, which you, you kind of based it off the Bigsby headstock, right? Yeah, you know, Fender and Bigsby, Paul Bigsby, uh, came out with a headstock on their earliest guitars in the early 50s, 48, 49. Um, and Paul Bigsby had a headstock that was uh, pre that predated Fender. Wow. And uh, I'm not sure if he had the cutout in the headstock or if that's just something I decided to do. Yeah. But that's where the inspiration came. And I'm, I build mostly Gibson style, so there's a lot of Gibson in this Fender type guitar. Tilt back headstock, a uh, volute. It's a set neck. Right. The reason I started building was that I just love guitars, and most of them that I've built have gone to friends and family, and it's been a learning experience for me to just do it. I just love learning about yeah. it. Yeah, and I learned a whole lot by watching you do it. For sure. We we did that yeah. together, didn't yeah. we? You know, the better you got as a player, the better I got as a maker. Yeah. And that's that's the way we've done pretty much all of our hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, a black Telecaster that I made for a friend and your your friend, I made a, uh, uh, my version of a Primus uh, rainbow bass. Yeah. And that had an Alembic bridge on it and a Bartolini pickup, Right. you know. Uh, don't know what happened to that, but uh, he, he loved it when he got yeah. it and I loved building it and uh, you know, these guitars probably came your way because I wanted to build them first more than you <laughs> wanting to have them. You I know, you were satisfied so. with the one or two that you had. And yeah. then I'd come over or I'd call and say, or I'd, I'd tell you, say, hey, you know, I got this idea for a guitar. How about if we do this? <laughs> and, more guitars. And, uh, on it, oh, yeah. I think we're up to... Uh, 20 or 21 over the that length of time and i'm working on my first production of uh, nine uh, that's the first time that i've ever done a production run so i'm working through those and it's been a labor of love i started thinking about that uh, almost eight or nine years ago yeah.